Vladimir Putin has offered a truce in the Ukraine war, but Kiev has soundly rejected his offer. AP correspondent Sagar Magani reports. Putin says he'd immediately order a ceasefire and start peace talks if Ukraine starts pulling troops out of four regions Moscow annexed two years ago and gives up plans to join NATO. At the alliance's headquarters, Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin notes Putin's the one who illegally occupied sovereign Ukrainian territory. He is not in any position to dictate to Ukraine what they must do to, to bring about peace. Kiev says Putin's proposal is absurd and aimed at undermining diplomatic efforts toward peace. Sagar Magani, Washington. Japan's delegation to the G7 summit in Italy have welcomed a final document produced by the group that focuses on Indo-Pacific security. The island country has seen tensions rise around its territory after geopolitical moves by China, Russia and North Korea. Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokeswoman Maki Terada Kobayashi. If you see uh, all these Russia, North Korea rapprochement during the past months, all in all, the um, security of Indo-Pacific is also very much interrelated with Euro-Atlantic security. The second day on Friday opened with a session on migration, with the leaders discussing ways to combat trafficking and increase investment in countries from where migrants start out on often life-threatening journeys. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is expected to be re-elected for a second term on Friday after his African National Congress Party signed a last-minute coalition agreement with its longtime political rival as the new parliament convened. This is VOA News. Over the weekend, leaders from nearly 90 countries will gather in Switzerland to discuss the path to peace in Ukraine. The Swiss and Ukrainian governments organized the summit at the request of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. VOA Eastern Europe Bureau Chief Miroslava Gangarza has the story. The peace summit follows the G7 summit in Italy, where countries agreed to use frozen Russian assets to pay for Ukraine's recovery. Speaking at the Ukraine Recovery Conference in Berlin this week, <inaudible> Zelensky said the first priority of the Swiss summit was a solution for sustainable peace. Standing alongside German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Zelensky said he hoped the summit would address energy security, the exchange of captives, the return of kidnapped children, and global food security. Nearly 90 countries, many represented by their heads of state, have accepted the invitation to attend. Russia has not been invited. Maroslava Gungadze, VOA News, Switzerland. Niger has shut off oil exports to China via its pipeline to Benin's coast, oil minister Mahaman Mustafa Bake Baku said on Thursday, deepening a standoff between the West African neighbors. Cross-border relations have been strained since Benin's blocked crude exports via its port from landlocked Niger in May and demanded the junta reopen its border to Benin's goods and normalize relations. The U.S. Supreme Court on Friday struck down a former U.S. President Donald Trump-era ban on bump stocks on guns. AP correspondent Jackie Quinn reports. The high court decision finds the Trump administration didn't follow federal law when it banned bump stocks, the type of rapid-fire accessory that was used by a sniper in Las Vegas who killed 60 people at a music festival in 2017. On a 6-3 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court justices agreed the Justice Department wrongly classified the accessories as illegal machine guns. The liberal minority on the court says it's common sense. Anything capable of unleashing a torrent of bullets is a machine gun. But the conservative majority suggested Congress should be addressing the issue of bump stocks. I'm Jackie Quinn. Simran Preet Panesar, a former Air Canada manager who is wanted for his alleged role in a $20 million gold heist, the largest in Canadian history, is preparing to turn himself in, his lawyer told the Canadian Broadcasting Corp on Friday. Panesar faces charges in connection with the April 2023 theft from Toronto's Pearson Airport.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.